All right, now I'm going to talk about azimuths. Azimuths are wonderful and they're great, and it's an absolutely wonderful way to be able to make measurements. Okay, what they are then, they're horizontal angles observed from any reference meridian. Any reference meridian. So in this case right here, I'm calling this north. That is my reference meridian. It's my reference line. So now any angle that's measured off of that is going to be considered an azimuth. So azimuth can be from 0 degrees all the way up to 360, decimal seconds again. And these are all clockwise angles. That's important. Always remember that azimuths are clockwise angles. Meaning you start here at your reference line and then you measure clockwise from that reference line to any given point that you have of interest. What you can have now is you have a forward azimuth and a back azimuth. And I'll show you here what, uh, what those are and what they reference to. So let's take an example here at A. Forward azimuth, 70 degrees. And how did we know that? Well, if this is your reference line, I measured 70 degrees right here. So that's a forward azimuth. Now I have a back azimuth. This back azimuth is going 180 degrees in the opposite direction of where you're at. So this angle here, all that is is 180 degrees. So if I want to know an azimuth, I'm going to take my existing 70 degrees, add the 180, and then it gives me an overall angle, which is my azimuth of now 250 degrees. So let's look at B now. B I have a forward azimuth. You can see the angle measured here, 145. The back azimuth then, remember we're just going to go exactly the opposite direction. So now we know this right here is 180. So then if I want to know my overall angle, starting from my reference meridian all the way to that point, then it's 145 here, 145 plus 180 is equal to 325 of my overall angle. C, let's take a look at C now. C, you can see that I have uh, an angle right there of 235 degrees. Forward azimuth, the back azimuth again is going in the opposite direction. Now you're going to see here that don't follow this pattern of always adding 180 degrees. That's not how it works. What we need to do is look at the sketch, look at the drawing. Where is the angle now? We know that the overall length is 235, that angle. Okay, this time if I'm going back the opposite direction, remember azimuths are measured from the meridian to the line and the point of interest, which is now here. So if I knew the azimuth all the way from here to there, I need to then subtract off 180, leaving me this angle right there. So that's all we did. 235 minus 180 is equal to 55 degrees. Another way to call out uh, um, angles is by using bearings. These are different than azimuths, so let's not get the two confused. You've got to be able to relate both of them and be able to compute between both of them. Bearings, we call that an acute angle between the reference meridian and the line of interest. Okay, they can be northeast bearings, southeast bearings, northwest, or southwest. And all that's telling you is your general direction. Am I going in a northeasterly direction? Am I going in a southeasterly, southwesterly, or northwesterly? That's all it is. So a bearing is going to contain that information telling you what direction you're going. So bearings can then only be between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. We said azimuth go from 0 to 360. Bearings, on the other hand, are only 0 to 90. So let's take a look at this. So north 0 degrees east, or north 0 degrees west, is equal to due north. So what we mean is this. If you look at this drawing right here, it's the acute angle measured from a reference meridian. Okay, if you are in quadrant 1 or 4, your reference meridian is this line right here. It is north. So when we measure the acute angle, so 
So say this is our line that we have of interest. It's the acute angle between the point of interest and our reference meridian, which is now 70 degrees. Okay, look at point D. It's the acute angle between our reference meridian and the point of interest, which is 30 degrees. But now a bearing, like I said though, it has magnitude, 70 or 30 degrees, but it also has direction. So A over here, this would then be north, 70 degrees east, because we're in the first quadrant, which is northeasterly. And then it's, so it's north and east, and then the magnitude of that angle is 70 degrees measured from our reference meridian. D, on the other hand, now we are going northwesterly. Magnitude of 30 degrees, because we're in quadrant four, this now becomes north 30 degrees west. So now, as I get past here, let me show you now the opposite. Now if I want to know quadrant two and three down here, our reference, material, uh, reference line is this line right here. And again, it's the acute angle from this reference line going to the point of interest, either way. So right here, this is south 35 degrees um, east, right, southeasterly direction. Over here, southwesterly, so south 55 degrees west. So you can see that I have a direction in south and west, and I have the magnitude, which is measured from my reference meridian to my point of interest, which is C. So now the example I'm going to show you with, the, with this slide to give you examples now, going through all this. North zero degrees east, what that means is I'm not measuring anything from my reference meridian, so which is just north, so it's zero. North zero degrees west, same thing as north. Now if I said I was going north zero degrees, zero minutes, one second east, that means I'm barely over here by one second, and so I'm very close to what north is. Northwest would be the exact same thing over here, one second. Okay, so as you continue on, you'll see the north 90 degrees east, south 90 degrees east. That's the same thing as saying east. And if you're uh, north 89, 59, 59 east, remember the direction here, north and east, tells you what quadrant you are in. And this tells you the magnitude from your reference meridian. So this is going to be quadrant 1. And it's going to be 89 degrees, 59 minutes, 59 seconds from my reference meridian of north. So it's going to put you all the way down to something like that. So you can go on through there and through the examples you can see exactly what we we're talking about and, uh, and referencing all the uh, all the others. So let's give, uh, give some more examples here. So let's take a look at A. A has a bearing of north 70 degrees east. Now keep in mind like we did azimuth, bearings also have a back bearing meaning 180 degrees the opposite direction. So back bearing, now these are so simple to be able to calculate. So simple. So if we have north 70 degrees east, you want to go the opposite direction of northeast, just change your direction and go south 70 degrees west. That's all it is. All that is just geometry. If I know this angle, that means I'm going to know that angle. Right, if I have this line right here as my bisector, those two angles right there are then going to are going to be the same. The magnitude will be the same here and here. It's just opposite directions. So one's northeast, the other one is southwest. So look at B here. B measuring the angle from my reference meridian, which is due south. 35 degrees is my magnitude, my direction then, because it falls in quadrant two, southeast. Back bearing. Again, opposite direction. If I'm going southeast, I am going northwest then for my back bearing. And since my magnitude, since this angle here is 35, this angle here is also going to be 35 degrees. So same magnitude, just opposite direction to be able to calculate your back bearing. C. Bearing a C, then measure the acute angle from your reference meridian of 55 degrees. That's your magnitude. Direction, we're in quadrant three, southwest. So south 55 degrees west. 
back bang, opposite direction, so now northeast, same magnitude of 55 degrees, and so it's just north 55 degrees east. Point D, north 30 degrees west, where's your reference meridian? North. We're in quadrant four because we're going northwest. Back bearing, same magnitude of 30 degrees. This time we're heading southeast instead of northwest. And this time as you measure that back bearing, we're measuring off of our reference meridian of south, which gives this angle here of 30 degrees. So as you compare azimuths and bearings, here is just a, a general summary of what you can look at. And these are the things we talked before. Azimuth, 0 to 360, bearing 0 to 90 degrees. Azimuths require just a numerical value. We don't have to have direction. Bearings, though, do require the two letters, northwest, southeast, whatever. Requires those letters to tell you the exact direction you're going. Azimuths can be used for any, any directions. Uh, bearings, same thing. They can be used to tell you whatever direction off of any reference meridian you're talking of. Azimuths are measured clockwise. All uh, bearings can be measured clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on which reference meridian you're using. And then azimuths are measured either from north or uh, from north only. Um, azimuths, though, on the other hand, are measured from north and south. Excuse me, bearings are measured from north and south. Make sure I, I say that right and don't confuse you. Now, if I was to convert between the two. This is, uh, this is your summary right here. This is how you do it. So in quadrant one, if I had a bearing, the bearing is equal to the azimuth, meaning the bearing magnitude is equal to the azimuth. But you're in quadrant one, so you know it's a northeasterly direction. That gives you the direction. Quadrant two, your bearing then is going to be 180 minus the azimuth. Quadrant three, bearing is one eight, azimuth minus 180. Quadrant four, your bearing is 360 degrees minus the azimuth. And recall again, this number here that's being calculated, I get a magnitude. And knowing what quadrant I'm in will tell me then exactly what letters to add on for my bearing right here, which would be northwest. So here's some examples for you. In quadrant one, the azimuth angle of 54 degrees. Bearing is equal to the azimuth, so north 54 degrees east. Quadrant two down here, azimuth 112 degrees. So all that is going to be 180 minus the azimuth, south. Okay, quadrant two is southeast, so then south 68 degrees east. So you can go through here. Go ahead and, uh, and take the time to be able to make sure you see what we're talking about in here. And I'll give you an example right here so you can understand it. So if I gave you the following azimuth, and this is what I want to encourage you to do. If you ever have questions, draw it. You'll always be able to see it if you just draw it. So if I have an azimuth, 128 degrees, 54 minutes, 32 seconds. So the first thing we ask ourselves, where is our reference meridian for the azimuth? It's north. Second thing, let's go ahead and draw the azimuth then. So there's my angle, 128 degrees, 54, 32. So what quadrant is my line in? Well, my quadrant is in, uh, my line is in quadrant two, which tells me then I have a southeast direction. All right, now where is going to be my reference meridian for the bearing? Okay, because it's in quadrant two, my reference meridian is south. So now we said back before, my bearing in quadrant number two is equal to 180 degrees minus the azimuth. And you can see that. I hope you can see that because what we're looking for, let's calculate this. This is the angle we were looking for right here. If I know this one, and I know this is 180 degrees, which is 180 degrees minus whatever that azimuth angle was. So because we knew it was in the second quadrant, it's a southeast bearing, and then the magnitude is simply 180 minus 128 degrees, 54, 32 seconds. So I'll give you more examples and homeworks and other things to do to make sure you can calculate and do these things.